back, Clown Mackay, to the Clown Mackay Society YouTube channel. Today we have a little special treat. We're going to go on a tour of Strathnaver electronically. But before we do this, I want to show you how you can all find this information. So, first I go to the National Library of Scotland. I click on that. I go to Digital Resources. Then I go to Map Images. Oh. After Map Images, I go to County Maps. After County Maps, I go all the way down to Sutherland. And here are a list of the Sutherland maps. Now, I want to show you guys the first map by Timothy Pont, a Scottish minister and cartographer that did a couple manuscripts of Mackay Country, or Strathnaver as it was known, uh, in the 1500s. This map is around 1583 to 1601. Generally, we don't know exactly when, but within this time frame. So here we have a portion of the map of Strathnaver where he depicts Loch Edible right here. And with that, you have the town of Tongue, or Tunk, here. And here's the Loch Kintail, which is um, the Kyle of Kintail, or the Kyle, excuse me, the Kyle of Tongue, Kintail, right here. And I'm not exactly sure if you see it here, but in another rendition, he note down um, Varric, the Castle Varric. But on this one, I don't happen to see Varric itself. But you do see um, these depictions right here. These are towns or um, localities. You see here in Melness, right? You have Melness right here. You've got the Loch Kintail or the Kyle of Tongue. And oh, this one's very interesting. This one says Island Nan Ron. Well, it says Ro here, but it's actually the island of Ron. And if we go to this image, the Aelin Nan Ron, which in Gaelic means the island of the seal, or seal island, this is one of the uh, islands that he depicts, right? As you can see in some, let's give you some context. Here's Betty Hill, the Stroth Neighbor Museum. Here is the Tongue House, Castle Barrack. And here is the Island of the Seal. So back to here, we've got the Island of the Seal, right? And uh, this is the, uh, this is for, you know, context wise, that's exactly where we were. Now, let's go check out the second map. This one I think is one of my favorites because it's much more detailed. So starting out, we have right here, Armadale. So in Armadale, historically there was a town called Poluriskeg, and um, this map does not depict, from what I can see, Poluriskeg. So Poluriskeg should be, I mean, this isn't an exact map, but it should be around this area right here. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't see it depicted here. I also do not see anything depicted of Borv Castle, which is interesting. That should be up here. Uh, in Kurtomi, Kur or here you got Kurtami, right? So that is another uh, big location that we are familiar with. Here is the Burn of Far, that little river that goes through, uh, goes towards Far Beach, right? Here's the Kirk of Far, the Church of Far, this little cross image. You've got the Town of Far. So Betty Hill is the current day Betty Hill, so I can show you on this map. So here we are, right? This is where um, this is where we're at on this map. You can see the Kirk afar. You see the Burn afar, right? So here we are. Here's far. These are the beaches. Borv Castle would have been right over here, which was a castle uh, that was destroyed in the, to my knowledge, I think the off the top of my head. Don't quote me. The 1500s by order of the Queen of Scots. Um, another interesting 
thing to look at here. I think I just saw it. Okay, so moving on to the next section that we'll look at, we'll see these woods right here. You see these uh, lines with double crosses in between them? These are woods. Uh, if you look at the map today, uh, let's see if we can get a good location of where this should be. This right here is Loch Naver, and this is the River Naver. So this should be going straight to uh, the beach. So if we go on to our current day map, and we go to, oh, excuse me, Loch Naver, in this area right here, where large woods that he annotated, and you can still see that there are remnants of that uh, of that forest or woods uh, on the outside, not necessarily on this inside. So that's something interesting to note. You see we have Loch uh, Naver here, and we've got, there it is, you got Loch Naver here. So that's where the Loch Naver is. It goes uh, down the River Naver into um, Betty Hill. All right, here we have, again, the island of Ron. Island Ron, right? So again, this is the second time that he depicts this island. Now, you can see right here that is a representation of a settlement. Now, if we go into the island itself, you can notice a settlement right in the middle, almost exactly where that settlement should be. This is a representation of the, just uh, the, the basically the two, two centuries of clearances that took place uh, up in Mackay country and throughout Scotland. It wasn't just the Highlands, all of Scotland experienced some type of clearance when the, the economy was changing from estates and uh, arrears that people would, uh, would use with their, their tenants and into cattle farming to include sheep and cows. Okay, so now here we are in the village or town of Tongue. You can see it right here, Tongue. And you see this word right here, Dun Varric. Dun or Dun is a, an old Gallic word that means fortress or castle. So this right here is showing Dun Varric or Castle Varric, right? And in our current day, we have that right here, Castle Varric. So even in the 1500s, now there's, there's some debate as to where or what Castle Varric was. People think it was an outpost, uh, people think it was just a watchtower. Um, uh, I don't know if people think it was actually a fortress. But it is interesting to note that uh, Timothy Pont himself here is showing or is, is stating this as Dunveric. So at least the people themselves were calling it uh, Dunveric or Dunveric. You have Loch Loyal here, and you can see these trees on the outside that he annotates. Now, if we were to go there today, it'd be interesting to see what we find here. So here we don't see as many of those trees uh, that he's talking about. So this is something that has changed in the landscape. These, these trees on the outside of Loch Loyal, right? It's interesting to show how um, the landscape changes. And also you have Ben Hope right here. Ben Hope was a uh, uh, right next to Melness right here. You can see Melness, Melness. Uh, and I just have to show this to you. Uh, I believe, let me see if that's where it is. Maybe it's in Loch Erebol. Yes, it is in Loch Erebol. Right here, Loch Erebol. Let me take you to Loch Erebol on this map. Okay, so Loch Edible, do you see this end right here next to Pola? This, right here, whatever this is, 
in his map, he says 180 fathom deep hole right here. I don't know where he got that information, but there is not, to my understanding, and I think we would have known this because I looked it up, there is no 180 uh, fathom deep hole in the, in, in the, um, at the beginning of Loch Erebol. So again, that's something that's very interesting. Note here, these trees, right? Right next to Loch Erebol. Let's see if he annotated anything of that sort. So we notice nothing here is depicted with trees. Just something that's interesting that I, I find personally interesting is those discrepancies between what we see today and back then and how the, the landscape may have changed. So following Loch Erebol down this way, this is going south for us. This map is um, west is pointing upwards and the north is pointing to the side or to north is pointing to the, to the right. You go down this, this way, you see a couple groves of trees here. And then you see something right here that's called Glen Goldie. Now notice it is a settlement, very small. You can notice the circle with the little tower, as well as this, Carnmaddy it looks like. Um, but Glen Goldie right here is, to my understanding, I've traced it and I believe that's right here in a place called Glen Gully. Now you may have heard of the song Glen Gully by Rob Don Mackay. Here is the, the Glen Gully River, and I am assuming, though I'm not a resident of this area, that this right here would be Glen Gully itself, right? So if you hear that song and you hear it referenced, that's probably what it's talking about. And just to give you a sense of where that's at, Glen Gully is right there. Oh, let me do that. Glen Gully's right there. And this right here is Mackay country. So very interesting stuff. Okay. So uh, I apologize for the length of this video. It's very long, um, but a lot of people showed some interest or expressed interest in wanting to see an old tour of Mackay country using an old map. I am not a... I am not an expert in the 1500s of Scotland, especially not an expert up in Mackay country. There's a lot for me to know. So one, I may have pronounced things incredibly wrong. And two, uh, I'm not as well versed in knowing whether uh, Pont was incorrect in his assessment of where things lie. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to show you that there are resources out there that are free that we can use to keep alive the ancient places of our ancestry. And I think this is a great tool because it gives us a perspective of what life would have looked like back then and also gives us a perspective on what the community uh, of Mackay country would have been. All around this map, you see um, towns and villages and settlements where if you go on a map today and you scroll down and you notice like we saw on the island of the seal or Eilin Nanron, you'll notice that that place used to have a settlement and that has long since been uh, evacuated and cleared. Um, and what the exact story is for each one of these settlements is a mystery to me. Um, and it's, it's up to us to, to try to find and put all these pieces together to understand what, uh, what Mackay country used to look like in its glory day. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I apologize for the length again, um, but if you've lasted till now, I truly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time.